Good day, folks. This video is a tribute to Daryl. He run he runs a uh, YouTube channel known as Radio Not 63. I'll put the link in the description. But at the time, he didn't realize it, and I didn't realize it. But he inadvert inadvertently caused me to go on a little bit of a quest, which ended up to be the five eight wave antenna. In a previous video. We looked at the capacitive matched antenna. This will be known as capacitive matching. And this type of antenna, as we discussed, would be designed to stick out from the side of a tower. Some people don't have a tower. Maybe they just want to stick it up on a mast or a pole or what have you, or even at the top of a tower, such as here. And in that case, would probably require something end mounted. This type of antenna works as being center mounted. So, some years ago, Daryl ended up with an antenna known as the Ringo Ranger. Uh, they don't make this antenna anymore. It's been replaced by a uh, Ringo Ranger 2. But the original one was a half wave, a half wave antenna, and it had a quarter wave ring or coil, I guess, one turn coil which resembled some sort of a ring, hence the name Ringo. <laughs> so uh, it's just a coil and uh, one turn, so it was a ring. And it was basically attached similar to this. It called for a 50 ohm coax. Uh, a braid went on here to the base of it, and your uh, center of your coax went on to a, a matching rod that swung around on the coil. Now, oddly enough, they had it put on one side, they had the, the mount for the connector on one side, but the matching rod itself was actually bent in a curve to reach around the other side, and right off the bat I figured, well, that's a little bit uh, <laughs> unnecessary, so I moved it around. That was one improvement. So anyway, I ended up, I uh, filled around with it a little bit. I uh, never could get it to uh, he, he he had it anyway, it, it was broken. Uh, part actually, Patsy Claw and it, it disintegrated. And uh, he brought it up to me and, and I uh, repaired the part for him, a little part in the matching section out of the junk box I had and, and uh, made up a piece close enough and got it working again. I uh, could never ever get it to tune down past 1.5 on the SWR, so uh, anyway, that was acceptable, so left it as is. I gave it back to him, but before I gave it back to him, I was looking at it, and I seen how the connector was on the same, was on the opposite side of where the matching arm had to be, and, and the matching arm had to bend, it was actually bent right out around the driven element to reach the part on the coil for the uh, sweet spot. So I said, well, that's one improvement I could make. So I got around to making a, uh, a home brew version of it, given the limited materials that I had at the time, and uh, came up with something and uh, gave it to Daryl anyway with the other one, and I could never ever get that one down past 1.5 either. So anyway, he had it for a while, and eventually he said, uh, I'm cleaning up the backyard. There's a bunch of aluminum there. Come get it if you want it. So... I went out and brought home the aluminum and discovered that this old antenna <laughs> that I had uh, conjured up a while before, a few years, uh, was in among the piles. So I'm going to try that again. So I tried fiddling with it and no buy, still going to get it to work. So I said, I wonder if I changed that a little bit. So I did. Instead of having a one turn coil, I put a two turn coil. So instead of going with a quarter wave, what the original one, the original one only had a quarter wave matching section, I went with a half wave matching section, and I increased the length of the driven element from a half wave up to a 5.8 wave. I was doing this with a two-piece telescopic tubing too, which was a great help at the time to be able to get the uh, right length that you wanted, and be able to easily adjust it up or down without having to do any cutting, and so on. And I ended up putting in a one eighth of an, uh, a wavelength stub down here on the base of it. That's in the mount. So your coax connection comes up, goes in here, the base of your coil, 
and the center of the coax goes onto the matching rod onto the coil. So, and you move this, of course, to get your uh, sweet spot. So, 5 8 and uh, half inch, pl a half wave plus 1 8 wave, that also equals a 5 8. So, we got a, a matched, balanced antenna. Now, I've tried this with a 5 8 wave coil, and I couldn't get that to work very well. And certainly, the quarter wave didn't work that well either. So, <laughs> uh, anyway, I got it to the half wave, uh, driving a 5 8 wave element with a 1 8 stub, and uh, that seems to be working pretty good. If you look at another video I have on here about the analyzer test, there's about a 1.1, 1.2 all over the 2 meter band, so it. Uh, it, it turned out to be a great antenna. Uh, some measurements from the top of the coil to the top of the driven element. I actually have about 47 and a quarter inches. Uh, the half wave is roughly about 39 inches, 39 and a quarter, give or take. You're going to make the coil. And the uh, stub on the ground, on the base of it, 9 and 5 8. That is a 1 8 wave, roughly, give or take. And I found too that uh, feeding it with. 75 ohm coax that it was uh, much easier to tune that was a little bit surprising on the 50 ohm coax it behaved very similar to the original ringo but uh, with 50 with 75 ohm coax it tuned absolutely flat so uh, <laughs> uh, it was a eureka moment at that point so i i uh, i dropped the, the schematic design Anybody want to copy it out and, and uh, try for themselves. Uh, this uh, is f the distance from where the coil attaches. The actual element is a little bit longer than that. And I'll show you that here now. There we go. Driven element here. From uh, this point up to the end of the driven element is about 47 and uh, a quarter inches. But the driven element itself is a little bit longer because it fits down into this PVC pipe insulated from the stub connector here. At the, uh, it's also connected with the base of the coil. And the coil is also connected at the base here of, of the driven element. And in the center of the connector you can see it's on this matching arm. It goes right out to the coil. And you can swing that around to reach your sweet spot. This little piece here, that's part of an old electrical panel, a grounding uh, bar. I did drill an extra hole through it, so the two pieces of aluminum, the holes actually overlap a little bit, and the set screw tightens it in once you uh, reach your sweet spot. The original version uh, was some, I think Cushcraft or some company made, it was called the uh, the Ringo. Uh, that was a single ring. I made a double ring, so I call this one the Dingo. <laughs> that was just a joke. Anyway, there you have it, folks. 5-8 wave, the matching system. Uh, stub at the bottom. The matching coil itself. Connector for the, the bracket for the coax connector here. You can see the center of the coax connector here has a little eyelet. And there's an eye bent into this aluminum rod. So then there's a screw and a couple of washers and a nut there. So it allows you to, that's a pivot or an axis, place where this rod can swing right around the coil to find your uh, matching spot. Took a while to get to the point, like I say, but uh, it ended up to be a great antenna and uh, one I'd recommend to anybody. So once again, we'll put the... Uh, schematic here if somebody wants to uh, copy it out and have a look at it and uh, try it for themselves this would be the schematic representation and there's a couple of videos on already of uh, these antennas that I've built so uh, you could look at those and, and one shows the SWR being tested on a, an analyzer and the other video shows you how uh, I assembled the uh, coil and, and so on. So it's uh, a great little antenna. It took a while to get there. A um, little bit different than the half wave 
as the half wave is capacitive tuned, whereas this one employs inductive matching because we're matching through an inductor or a coil. So that's a, a totally different uh, matching system, but yet one that would work in this, this type of application. It uh, may work in some others as well, but it certainly uh, worked out for me in, in this one. Thank you very much for watching, folks. Hope you enjoyed this. This was a, uh, a bit of a quest that Daryl uh, had a broken antenna. <laughs> And uh, at the end of the journey, I ended up with a new design of antenna, a 5.8 for 2 meters. Thanks for watching, folks. Bye-bye.